What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create these 3D paint strokes in Cinema 4D. I've used them for a couple posters, like you can see here. We have this one with the statue, we got a messy one, and I've also done this with text. You can see like so. So you can use this for a bunch of different things. Um, either adding it to 2D images, using 3D text, using 3D objects, whatever. Um, but it's a great looking effect. If you're actually interested in creating a poster like this with the Photoshop part and everything, I did a Skillshare class on this whole process. And if you use my link down below, you get Skillshare free for two months. So you can absolutely watch this for free and learn how to do the Photoshop part if it interests you. So if you feel like learning more, feel free to check that out. If not, you can just figure out how to make these sweet paint strokes. So I'm in Cinema 4D here and I'm in my Lightroom, but we're gonna need a few things before we get started. So the first thing you need is some sort of brush stroke, similar to this. Um, I got mine from a website called freepick.com and just searched paintbrush. And you can see they have a bunch of paint strokes you can find. The one I use looks like this. Um, so you just want something that is a shape similar to this. You can have it with a white background and black paint or reversed, it doesn't really matter. And then you also want a texture that is a paint texture. So for example, if I Google paint textures, you want something that sort of looks like this where you have different layers of different colored paint. And try to find one that is free to use, that you're able to use for free. There's plenty of websites that have it. Um, so find one and download them. Then when we come to Cinema 4D, uh, we can create the material with those things. Now the paint material I'm gonna be using is actually one from my material pack in my store. So if you actually have this, um, or if you see it and wanna buy it, it actually looks originally like this. This is what the material originally looks like. I, and I actually have a bunch of paint materials. If we come here, you can see there's a few. So this is this one. Uh, and all I did was come in here and got rid of the distort because it made the layers look a little wonky and turned off the luminance because I have luminance checked on all of these, but it was for the project I was working on when I created them. And you don't really need them for most things. So I unchecked that. And that's the paint material I will be using, but if you find a paint texture, you can put it on a material and it'll work just as well. Um, the other thing is I'm in my own light studio, which is also in my store if you're interested, but you just need a couple lights in Cinema 4D to create this and you should have no problems. Now with all that out of the way, we can actually go ahead and create this effect. So I actually created mine around an object, so I'm gonna go ahead and load in an object just as a reference point. Okay, so this is my reference object. Um, it's basically a statue from 3 spelled out dscans.com um, if you're interested in finding these. And all I did was add a twist effect to it with a 360 degree angle. So you can see it's um, it looks like that. And that's what I used for the poster. So that's what I'm going to be using as a reference. And I have my uh, scratch material on it, but you just need a white material on it really or whatever. If you even use an object, you do not have to. Um, and then when you create a paint material, um, so if I come into my paint material, which looks like this, go to alpha and with the brush stroke you get, go ahead and uh, load image. And you can save, I have it saved as a TIF, but um, you can save it as a PNG, JPEG, whatever. Um, open it, I'm gonna click yes and it will load like this if it has a white background and you'll notice that's the opposite of what we want but if you click invert it will create the brush stroke effect um, on the edges as you can see there which i'm using right click to rotate this by the way um, so that is our paint material and let's go ahead and create our paint so i'm going to get a plane and i'm going to hop out of my camera real quick and I'm going to move this just off to the side of the object I'm using as a reference point. And I'm going to make the width of this about 120. And that can vary anywhere between like 100 and 140. It works for the size that I'm working in. Um, and then the height, I want to make about 1000. And then if we go to display and show lines, 
We want this to look more like a grid. You can see these lines are spaced out a lot. So let's go to the height segment, make that 100, and that's more of a grid. And we can turn the lines off. And then we want to go ahead and get a displacer because we want to try to give this a paint-like um, feel to it. So we want to add those little bumps and imperfections that would that would occur when you spread paint out on a canvas or whatever. Uh, so let's add that displacer to the plane. Go to shading and I went with noise and then the noise I selected was actually uh, Luca and then global scale I made a thousand. So now our plane is bumpy, which is what we want. And now we want to add an FFD to our plane. And the best way to align this is just to click fit to parent and then increase the um, thickness to about three. Bump the grid points down X. X you can keep at three actually. Y we're going to do two. And then Z we're going to do yeah, we'll do nine. Come over here and click the points. And we're gonna click some of these points and bring them up. And you can see that just distorts some of the plane, which is what we want. Rotate over and keep going just to make some subtle adjustments to it. And I think that's pretty good. If we come in here and just double click the stop, uh, the top of the stop light things, we can hide the actual purple lines of those displacers, but they still take effect. And there is our brush stroke. Now it's looking a little rough, so let's go ahead and add a subdivision and add the plane to it. And with the plane selected, I'm going to press Command G, so this is in its own null, and we'll open that up, and then add your paint material to. Um, that plane and there you go you can see our paint stroke now let's go ahead and add a helix because we want something for this paint stroke to follow um, I'm gonna hop back into my camera and the helix we're gonna make the plane XZ and I'm gonna drag this real far down now the settings for this for you can be whatever if you're not following an object um, I'm gonna try to follow this object the best I can so for that, I'm going to make the start radius about 300. The end radius, I'm going to make about 250. Radial bias, we'll go like 70, I guess. Height, we're going to have to bump that up a lot to maybe 750. And just for the record, about um, this whole bottom part here up until about this point, um, our brush stroke will not be on it. It'll probably start around here and finish somewhere up here. Um, obviously we can mess with the settings, but the settings I chose, that's kind of how it will work. So I'm keeping that in mind. I'm going to bring this down a little further. Height bias then, we want to bump up to, I don't know, 65. And then bring this down even more. So we have something like that. Okay, now we got to get the spline wrap. We're going to just add that to the null the planes in. And then with the, we want to go to the spline wrap settings and click where it has spline, click the little arrow off to the right and click the helix. You could also just drag the helix down into there, up to you. But set the axis to plus Z. And there we have our brush. Now I brought my offset up to close to 13 about there so we can see the end of it up there and the end of it down here which is what I was going for. Um, you can also come into the size here and mess with some of these graphs. So if I press alt or command and click in the middle I can bring down the size on that end and the size on the other end. And then on rotation we can come here and maybe rotate it like so. Bring it up about there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So we have a nice rotation going on. We have the size getting smaller towards the ends. And I'm going to get the helix and actually bring this down a little more. 
and I'm going to select both the helix and the subdivision and my object. Get the rotation tool. I don't want the dots, I want the whole object, and I'm going to rotate it. Something like that, there we go. And then adjust the helix even more. I don't want to rotate, I want to bring it down slightly. There we go, that's looking good. And I actually duplicated this whole thing, so if I select the helix and the subdivision and press uh, Alt-G, and then press Command-C, Command-V, we can have a second one where you can adjust more things. So let's decrease the size of the helix, bring it up, uh, maybe rotate it. Uh, open up the subdivision, go to the plane, maybe make the width about 70. Uh, go to the um, go to this go to the helix and height bias will just make it 30 this time So everything's on slightly a different angle and we have something like that and There you go. That's how you kind of go about creating these of course. You don't need the object in the way It's just how I went about creating the whole project in general But if we go ahead and hide these things you can see we have this perfectly good brush stroke that we can um, use for whatever we want set up however we'd like and if we give this a little render You can see what we have by the way my Lightroom I made it a little duller So in Photoshop I could brighten the color and everything so it's not as bright as it would typically be but it should look pretty good and actually I gotta hide this And there we go, there's our brush stroke. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like. At 100 likes, I will put a free brush stroke down in the description for you guys to download. Check out my Patreon as well. You can actually download the Cinema 4D file from this tutorial, as well as the Photoshop posters and the text Photoshop file, as well as tons of other goods. I'm posting weekly goods there now as well. You also get shout outs in videos like these guys. So check that out if that interests you and you wanna support the channel, I really appreciate it. Subscribe for more tutorials like this. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Follow my Instagram, that's Quezzy. Check out my Skillshare for more Cinema 4D and Photoshop tutorial-like stuff. Um, a lot of good stuff I have over there. And you get two months free. But thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.